Well, first of all, thank you for this award, but I think also thank you to the Innovation Foundation for the extraordinary work you do throughout the year in nurturing and supporting innovation throughout Chicago. It's an honor to be a part of a class that includes the other three honorees because I admire each of them and as a lifelong Chicagoan, I really appreciate that they have chosen to do the work they do here in Chicago. In thinking about what makes innovation possible, like Grant, I too start with intellectual curiosity. The idea that one is always trying to broaden exposure to ideas and interests, that you commit to being a lifelong learner, and indeed, when I'm asked to either be on the board or advise a company, my criteria is one, would I enjoy a long dinner with these people? <laughs> and if the answer is no, there is no second question. <laughs> so for the companies out there that I work with, I really enjoy my long dinners with you. <laughs> Two, do I find the business sincerely interesting? Three, am I really convinced I can help them? But the last criteria for me is, will I learn something new? I also think it's critically important to be surrounded by diverse points of view. As has been said, if everyone agrees, maybe no one knows anything. And having spent a lot of years, as you heard, working to increase diversity in both executive C-suite and boards, I do that not because I think it's the right thing to do, but because I know it's the smart thing to do. Uh, Booth just published a really interesting research paper indicating that companies with more diverse management actually produce more innovation income than other companies. And I think the idea is that we're looking for different perspectives, not consistent and the same perspective, and to create a culture that allows for disagreement. Which in turn, I think, relates to something else that Grant said that I very much agree with, which is fundamentally innovation comes from challenging the status quo, from asking questions, many questions, often why not or what if. There's a terrific book that's been written called Rookie Smarts, and it talks about how often the most important breakthroughs come from people who haven't been in their jobs very long, and it's because those people, the rookies, are the ones that are less fearful of asking the challenging questions. There's a school of thought in brainstorming that at least two of the people in the group should know nothing about the subject because they're the ones that can ask the questions that might lead to the breakthroughs. And it's why it's so hard for successful companies with strong legacies to innovate, because they're certain that they know the right way to do things. As Einstein once said, imagination is even more important than knowledge. And in fact, it's that ability to think differently that leads to innovation. It was interesting to me in the 1980s when we were launching Playboy TV and then the 90s Playboy.com that in that very same period, Time Warner, which owned Time Inc. magazine, the most successful news magazine in the world, and many cable company uh, operators, never saw the opportunity to have the changes in the world provide them with a chance to create something new. And indeed, the 24-hour highly successful news service was not launched by them nor called Time. It was launched by an upstart named Ted Turner and called CNN. What ultimately innovation comes down to, however, I think, is courage. 
the courage to take risks. Why did I think at the age of 29, without ever working at another business, never mind having an MBA, that I could take over a New York Stock Exchange traded company that was in serious financial difficulty and turn it around? It was a WTF moment. <laughs> I think when any of us steps up in those moments, it's because someone believed in us. A teacher, a mentor, a boss, a parent. My father thought that 29-year-old person without a business degree or vast business experience was to be trusted to save the company he'd spent 30 years building. But long before that, my mother made me believe that I could do anything. So when I was in college, I planned to go to law school and to wind up either in the Senate or the Supreme Court. <laughs> Years later, when I would be CEO of Playboy Enterprises, and we had, in fact, turned the company around, and it was very successful, my mother and I were at an event where I was receiving an honor, and someone came up to her and said, oh, Millie, you must be so proud of your daughter. And without missing a beat, my mother said, she could have run a much bigger company. <laughs> My mother, who is 98 years old and is here with me tonight, <laughs> as she has been with me throughout my life, to you, Mom, I say, Thank you for giving me the confidence and courage to do what I have done. <laughs> to the rest of you, this room full of innovators, I say, while we continue to find our own new paths and innovations, let's spend at least as much time giving others the confidence and courage to find and pursue their innovations. As T.S. Eliot once said, if you're not in over your head, how do you know how tall you are? <laughs> to be a trailblazer is very satisfying, but to be a trailmaker is truly rewarding. Thank you.